very often in science we have to, to use very large numbers or sometimes very small numbers. And that's why we use scientific notation. And this lesson is going to show you how to do that. Now let's say we have a, a very large number. For example, uh, maybe we have this, this number right here. And it looks like we have one nine followed by, looks to be 12 zeros. So it might be hard to read that number. Uh, if you're in the, in the United States, we would probably read that as 19 trillion. If you live in another country, you might read that as 19 billion. Anyway, it's a very large number. So how do we express that is, as a scientific notation number? Well, what you have to do is you start by looking at the understood decimal point. There's understood to be a decimal point right here at that, uh, that spot right there. And we're going to move it. We're going to move this so that the number is changed so that it's in between 1 and 10. So I'm going to have to move this decimal point to the left. And we start counting spaces. It's, it's a lot of spaces. There's uh, 6, 7, we keep counting. There's 9, 10, 11, 12, and one more. And if we move it to that spot right there, that's 13 places. We just had to move it 13 places over to the left. And so the number is now 1.9, and we have times 10 to the 13th. And we use the number 13 because we moved it 13 places. And so that's how you'd express this number in scientific notation. So 19 trillion would be written as 1.9 times 10 to the 13th. We don't have all those zeros there that are running together. And so scientific notation is a lot easier to, to type into a calculator or to, or to read. And so we have two parts of this scientific notation number. The first one is called the exponent. And in this case, our exponent is 13. That's the power to which the number 10 is raised. Whenever you have a scientific notation number, the times is always going to be the same. The 10 there is always going to be the same, but that exponent, of course, can change depending upon how many places or how many spaces you have to move that decimal point. Now, we also have a number out in front. In this case, it's 1.9, and that's going to be a number that's in between 1 and 10. We call that number uh, the mantissa, and that's the number. It sometimes looks like a coefficient out in front. It's that multiplier that's always greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. And so if a number is in correct scientific notation, it has to be in between 1 and 10. And so in this case, the mantissa is 1.9. Now, we can also use scientific notation to talk about very small numbers. And so let's say we have this number, point and then a bunch of zeros, 6, 3. And this is a good example of showing why we want to use scientific notation, because honestly, those zeros start to run together, and it's, it's a hard number to read. Well, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take that decimal point, and we're going to move it so that the number is in between 1 and 10. Now, this time, we have to move the decimal point to the right. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight. So it looks like we've just moved that decimal point eight places to the right. And so I move the decimal point right there. And so that's 6.3. And we're going to call this times 10 to the negative eighth. And we have a negative exponent when we have a very small number. And so once again, the rule for that is to take the decimal point and move it so that the mantissa is in between 1 and 10. So in this case, we had to move it to the right. Now the exponent is going to be the number of places that that decimal had to be moved. So in this case, we moved it 8 places, and so we had an 8 up there, right here. In the last example, we had, I believe it was a 13. Now some students get confused. Should you use a positive exponent or a negative exponent? And some textbooks talk about if you move it to the right, it's negative, the left is positive, but if, if you're going in the other direction, it's the opposite. So I tell students, think about it as either a small number or a big number. If you have a small number, like uh, this number we had is obviously very small, it's going to be a negative exponent. If you have a large number, like we had earlier, that number 19 trillion, we're going to have a positive exponent. 
So once again, negative exponents for small numbers, positive exponents for big numbers. So let's try a few examples here. And we're going to try to take some numbers and write them in scientific notation. So here's the first example. We have 78,000. So this time, we start with the decimal point, which is understood to be right there. And we're going to move it so that the mantissa is in between 1 and 10. So we move it to the left. Move it 1, 2, 3, 4 places. And so our mantissa is 7.8 times 10 to the 4th. And notice it's positive 4 because this is a big number. 78,000 is a pretty big number. It's much greater than, than 1. Here's another example. It looks like a small number this time. 0. 0.0000. 826. So we have our decimal point. We're going to move it to the right this time. How many places? Do we stop there? No, we have to go one more right there. And so it's going to be 8.26. And how many places did we have to move that? I hope you counted five places. Now, is that a positive five or a negative five for the exponent? Well, this is a pretty small number, so it's a negative 5. 8.26 times 10 to the negative 5th. Here's another example. 8 followed by 9 zeros. And so in some parts of the world, they'd read that as 8,000 million. In the United States, we read that as 8 billion. So we take the um, understood decimal point, which is right there, and we're going to move that so that the mantis is in between 1 and 10. So looks like we've got to go to the left this time. How many places? That's it. So it's 9 places we moved it. The answer is 8 times 10 to the 9th. Is it positive 9th or negative 9th? Well, this is a big number, so it's positive 9. 8 times 10 to the 9th is the right answer. Now let's try going the other direction. Let's take some scientific notation numbers and write them as just regular notation numbers. So this time we have 5.6 times, I'm sorry, 5.3 times 10 to the negative sixth. So the first thing you want to do is think, is that a big number or a small number? Well, it's a negative exponent, so it's a small number. So we start with the 5.3, and we're going to move it to the left six places. So one and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're going to stick a decimal point there. And what goes in these other places? Well, we're going to have to stick some placeholder zeros. So the answer is point zero 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 five three. And if you want, you can rewrite that so that it's a little bit neater and you don't have all that... Uh, We'll do the eraser here, and we'll erase all that and that original decimal point. So it's that's our correct answer. Let's try the next example. Here we have 3.99 times 10 to the fourth. So once again, it's a positive exponent, so it's a big number. We move the decimal point to the right. So it's 3, and then we had our 0.99. We move it to the right four places. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and we need some placeholder zeros there. And so that's our answer. It looks like it's 39,900. So I'll erase all those, and we have our answer. 39,900. A little comma there. One more example. 8.22 times 10 to the negative fifth. Well, we have a negative exponent, so it looks like this is a small number. We're going to move the decimal point to the left. So we have our 8.22. And we move it to the left five places. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So we need a decimal point right there. And we're going to have some placeholder zeros in here. And so the answer is, let me erase all that uh, extra ink on the slide. And so the answer is point oh 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 eight two two. And so hopefully at this point, you have a pretty good feel for how to deal with scientific notation. 
Um, in our next lesson, we're going to learn how to input scientific notation numbers into your calculator, which is a very important skill in science.